detection is uh, going to be about malignant lesions. Obviously, we're not interested in detecting hemangioma. We're interested in characterizing hemangioma, but we're not really curious to know if the patient has two, three, or five hemangiomas. So it's mainly, this is mainly going to be on metastasis, and then uh, later on a little bit about C. And you've also heard from Edilene about um, uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Our experience with cholangiocarcinoma is quite limited, so this will not be part of this talk. Just again, this has also been mentioned today, contra uh, conventional ultrasound really is um, not very good when it comes to detection of focal liver lesions. It's clearly insufficient and as a sole test should no longer be performed unless uh, there is obvious overt disease. And why is, con why is unenhanced ultrasound bad? It's particularly bad when it comes to very small lesions um, for really pretty obvious lesions. And just as an aside, all imaging modalities, whether it is contrast-enhanced ultrasound, CT or MR, have their main limitations still in this area of the very small lesions. They continue to be difficult to detect with all the advances of modern imaging that we have at hand. Uh, a quick reminder that contrast-enhanced ultrasound is a dynamic imaging modality, with, uh, although it is obviously continuous, real-time. It has three important phases, the arterial phase, the portal venous phase, and the delayed phase. And I'll show you the significance of these phases when it, with regards to imaging of metastasis. There, in principle, there are two types of metastasis, the hyper- and the hypovascular ones. The, the majority of metastases are so-called hypovascular, which means they have relatively little arterial enhancement, typically in a rim fashion, whereas hypervascular metastases um, occur, for example, from malignant melanoma, thyroid carcinoma, sarcomas, and uh, several other primary types. This will determine what the metastasis looks like in the arterial phase. Pretty much independent of that, however, the metastases will produce a washout in the, delay, in the portal venous phase, and particularly so in the delayed phase, where they tend to occur as really hypo-enhancing and typically well-defined focal lesions. Here is a, a, a very typical hypovascular metastasis with a nice rim enhancement in the um, arterial phase. Uh, and here is the equivalent Again, arterial phase imaging of a hypervascular metastasis. Here are the, uh, the, the delayed phase images. And even though it's a bit bright in here, okay, you can see that the appearances in the delayed phase are really pretty much identical, independent of what they look like in the arterial phase. And here is another hypervascularized metastasis from a malignant meloma, melanoma in this case. And what you can see is, again, it shows the enhancement defect, but there are also two non-enhancing, uh, which represent further metastasis, which were invisible on the baseline scan. And this is really the rationale for uh, detecting focal liver lesions. It is to look for non-enhancing lesions in an otherwise homogeneously enhancing liver during the portal venous and particularly in the late phase. Here is a, um, a Dr. Yenet from Würzburg, which is, I think, very, very impressive. There were a couple of areas which were quite suspicious for metastasis on the unenhanced scan you've just seen. Uh, and this is the enhanced scan now of that same right lobe of the liver. And um, I think it's pretty obvious that there are four, far more lesions now very, very nicely demonstrated than on the individual, or than on the initial unenhanced scan. Again, this does not project quite as nicely as, as it looks on my laptop computer, but I think it's still pretty convincing. So this is a rather extreme case of uh, multiple, almost diffuse metastases, many of them quite small, so those lesions that are difficult to, to see. But sometimes you actually see a set, um, even in relatively large lesions. And here was a, a patient with a throat tumor, which had uh, two lesions here, uh, or three lesions, but then uh, two additional lesions uh, at the more superficial part of the liver, which were invisible scan, uh, became apparent. This is a patient with carcinoma of the colon um, who had limited disease and who was scheduled to undergo liver resection uh, the next day. And this was um, the unenhanced scan, which showed one metastasis, one metastasis in the lateral segments of the left lobe, the remainder of the liver, there was nothing seen. 
This is now the um, portal venous phase after again. There's a second lesion up here. I think you've probably just seen it. So we saw two metastases and this was a CT scan which was taken prior to the resection and again it showed one, two metastases. So contrast enhancement helped us to detect the second metastasis we didn't see on unenhanced ultrasound. Now this is the intraoperative uh, ultrasound of this case with uh, one metastasis here shown at the uh, high up at the dome and this is the second detected contrast medium intraoperatively and it confirms the one metastasis the small one high up the second one and then right here at this very edge a third metastasis which at palpated and, and uh, inspected directly but it still shows you that there, is, that there are additional lesions which can be seen on contrast enhanced ultrasound during the operation. And um, this really does help a lot. And resection pathology confirmed the three metastases. Just to summarize this, if you look back at the CT carefully, you can see the lesion here, which was detected intraoperatively, but it was not uh, interpreted as such prospectively. Just to show you a future prospect, this is a, liver a truly liver-specific low-MI agent for uh, liver imaging. This is BR14. And I think um, you can see that during the delayed phase with these punched-out lesions, this really is the sort of image quality that we would like to see with uh, every contrast-enhanced case. And this is not available. So uh, it would be great if industry could give us such new toys. A few figures here. This are, these are um, four different studies looking at the detection of uh, liver metastases. The first three here um, using CT and MRI as the reference without a real gold standard. And then the one down here by Konopka using intraoperative ultrasound as a proper gold standard. Independent of the reference increase in sensitivity by approximately um, 20 percent and this is really I think reflects quite nicely what we see in daily practice. Various studies uh, all with intraoperative correlation, conventional ultrasound, contrast enhanced ultrasound, CT and uh, con uh, non-specific MRI and MRI with liver specific contrast media you can see that uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound is probably in the same range as uh, CT or contrast uh, enhanced MRI without liver specific contrast and those with liver specific contrast agents those studies do show uh, a slightly higher um, sensitivity and I still think that this contrast enhanced so, sorry that uh, MRI with liver specific contrast agents continues to be the non-invasive gold standard of liver imaging Looking at this a little bit more in detail, we have performed one study on 35 patients here who had a total of 84 metastases, and they all under, underwent contrast, uh, intraoperative ultrasound with or without um, resection. And uh, again, the sensitivity 70% for conventional ultrasound, 82% for contrast enhanced ultrasound, and 80 and 83% respectively for CT readers one and two. So almost identical results here for CT and ultrasound. Another study that I think is really um, quite interesting, again, it is a, tr uh, a study that has histology as, as a real gold standard, albeit fine needle aspiration. 30 patients here, all with metastasis. Additional metastasis seen in 18 patients. This was still with Libovist. 17 of these 18 were biopsied under contrast-enhanced guidance because they were obviously otherwise invisible, so you need contrast enhancement. And in all 17, there was histologic proof of metastasis. I think that's a very encouraging study because it shows that those little lesions that we will find additionally do truly represent metastasis and that they're not false positive on a large scale. I'm sure there are some false positives, don't get me wrong, but they're not false positive on a large scale. I think this is what this, lead, what this study proves. And, and uh, furthermore, 
uh, in about a third of the cases, these patients were changed to, intra to inoperable, unresectable, based on the result of the contrast-enhanced ultrasound uh, combined with biopsy. I think this is really quite important because uh, it means uh, operation, unnecessary operation was spared to about a third of this um, certainly selected uh, population in this study. This slide you've seen before, interoperative ultrasound and contrast enhancement. These are the results um, from a study that was led by Eddie Lean, and we were um, the second center in that study recently published. We looked at 51 patients who underwent open uh, liver resection with or without simultaneous radiofrequency ablation, and the sensitivity of intraoperative ultrasound was improved to 80 from 81% to 96% compared to the resection specimen or intraoperative biopsy. Now, you may wonder and say, hang on, we thought that intraoperative ultrasound was the gold standard and was almost 100% sensitive. That is obviously not true. If you just perform uh, intraoperative ultrasound, and uh, you will probably overlook about 20% of the metastasis. And that corresponds very well to the clinical outcome of those patients because we know that about half of the patients who undergo liver resection will come back with so-called new metastasis within six to 12 months. These are, of course, not new metastasis. They were there before because they came from the primary tumor. The primary tumor is gone, so they can't possibly be new metastasis. They're old metastasis that were too small to be seen. And with using intraoperative contrast-enhanced ultrasound, we starting to detect at least some of them. So we really have, and I very strongly believe this, uh, a new gold standard for liver imaging, and that is intraoperative contrast-enhanced ultrasound. The EFSIM guidelines um, have recommended indications. Edeline's already shown them, so I'll keep this very short. The crucial point here really is all liver ultrasound scans to rule out liver metastasis. What this means is unenhanced ultrasound is inadequate if you are serious about ruling out liver metastasis. Before I finish, I want to spend a couple of minutes on HCC. HCC is more difficult to detect than metastasis. Why is that so? Two reasons, really. The first is the kinetics of the lesion. The difference is that the washout in the delayed phase and the portal venous phase is less pronounced than in metastasis, and often it's not even there. About a third, I'll show you a study on that, but about a third of, of uh, the HCC will not wash out in a significant way in the delayed phase. So that makes detection in these two phases it's much more difficult. We, we rely on the arterial phase, but again, Eddie's discussed this early on, and covering the entire liver during the arterial phase is exceedingly difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. The second reason why it's so difficult is because the liver in the cirrhotic patient, and obviously the vast majority of HCC occurs in patients who have either chronic active hepatitis or cirrhosis, these livers are abnormal and they're difficult to scan. They're heterogeneous, they attenuate, they're often enlarged, uh, so penetration is a problem. So all these factors are against um, detecting, focal, uh, detecting HCC. Now here's an example where, despite all these limitations, we did well. Unenhanced scan of a patient who's previously been resected for uh, an HCC, and there is a lesion right up here, somewhere there. It's not really well shown here, but there was a single lesion. This lesion, we scanned on this lesion, and then we did a rapid suite going down and up again through this liver. And you've probably already seen that there are a number of arterially enhancing lesions. There's one, there's one, there's one. And this is what I said earlier on. You've got to interpret these images later on. Review the arterial phase on your cine loop. And when you do that and you come to the individual images like this, you can toggle between your contrast mode and your B mode, and you can quite nicely see where these lesions are. Here is the delayed phase of the same patient. And I'm sure you will agree with me that there are some lesions here, but there are less than on the arterial scan, and they're less obvious. Here is one, there is one. So there are a few. So, and this is the corresponding uh, angiogram which was performed prior to the chemotherapy or chemoperfusion that this patient had and I think it quite nicely shows these all these multiple hypervascular lesions. 
Here is a patient with a large HCC, and this is a delayed phase levovist, showing very beautifully not only the lesion, but also multiple satellite lesions around it, from around this HCC, which were completely invisible. So again, this case, no contrast uptake of levovist, which is slightly different from Sonoview in the delayed phase. If you have that, it's very nice for detecting, but it's not always the case. In this study, very nice study by Dr. Nicolaou, 104 histologically proven HCC, 70% washed out, but 31 were iso-enhancing in the delayed phase. Now, if you look at those 31, then you can see that this was predominantly in well-differentiated and never the case in poorly differentiated. So it's got something to do with the degree of differentiation. And due to those limitations that I've just mentioned, in the current and in the previous version of the EFSIM guidelines, there is the recommendation not to use it routinely, i.e. CEUS, for the detection of HCC due to a lack of supportive data. And it's not written there, but I may, I may add this also due to a general skepticism regarding the detection of HCC. We thought it might be worthwhile to look into this um, so we started a study, which um, one of my juniors is just currently writing up. In fact, I have the manuscript with me for review. And um, we looked at 32 patients with suspected HCC. These were, I have to say, predominantly patients with advanced tumors, mainly multifocal tumors. Of those 32, 29 eventually had reference imaging confirmed HCC. Baseline ultrasound detected on a patient level Again, advanced tumors, 27 of those, CEUS, 29. So it's an increase on a patient level from 93 to 100%. The total number of HCC was 128 in our population, 101 seen on ultrasound without contrast, 111 with contrast. Increase in sensitivity with regards to individual lesions from 81 to 87%. So there is apparent some improvement, but none of these changes were statistically significant. This may well be due to sample size, but the advantage is obviously relatively small. And this is where I would like to conclude. Thank you.